So we're going to look at variation, and variation is actually something very, uh, considerably different than uh, what you learn in Algebra 1. You learn about direct variation and inverse variation, and those were specifically lines that went through the origin and the parabola, or not parabolas, the hyperbolas for the inverse variation. But those were very specific cases and not variation in general. What you see in general is y varies directly as something. And it's going to be a variable in general x. And it can be anything. It could be y varies directly as x means you get some equation that's like y equals k times x. But you can also vary directly as the square of that variable, which will get you y equals kx squared. Or the cube of that variable, which will give you y equals kx cubed or the square root of that variable, which is y equals k times the square root of x. Um, and this language of variation is the language of old school science. So if you look at really old science texts, when they came, when scientists came up with the law for something, then they used the language of variation. And the, all of the examples I'm going to show you are actually scientific principles written in the language of variation. So the example for direct variation that we're going to look at is the law that talks about pendulums. So the period of a pendulum is directly proportional to the square root of the length of that pendulum. And directly proportional means the same thing as direct variation. So what I can do is I can come up with some generic equation. If I said y is the period and x is the length, then I have some equation y equals k square root of x. Now I don't know what that constant is. That constant is going to depend on the pendulum. So this is some generic equation. But if I want to write a specific equation for a specific type of pendulum or specific using weights and stuff, then um, I need to find out what k is. And I need more information because this is too vague. So here's, the, here's another example. Uh, if a pendulum is 64 centimeters long and has a period of 1.6 seconds, what is the period of a one meter pendulum? Well, I know that generically speaking, from the example I just talked about, um, or the rule, or the law I just talked about, it's y equals k square root of x is the generic formula, and I just need to find k for this particular setup. And so I can substitute in the values I know, the 1.6 equals k times the square root of 64 to find that k value. So 1.6 equals um, 8k and therefore k equals 0 0.2. And so now having that k value, then I have a specific equation for this setup. So this is called a specific or particular equation. So if I ask for a particular or specific equation, I basically want you to find k. And so now that I have this equation, I can actually answer the question I've been given which is what is the period of a one meter or 100 centimeter long pendulum, which gives me y equals 0 0.2 times 10, which is two seconds. So now let's look at what inverse variation really is. Not the limited algebra one version, but the real sciency language version of it. Of it. So an inverse variation or an inversely proportional relationship can be expressed as y varies inversely as or y is inversely proportional to. And once again, like direct, it can be anything. Um, if it's just x, that means it's y equals k over x. If it's x squared, it's y, y equals k over x squared. If it's like the square root of x, then it's y equals k over the square root of x. And I can put pretty much anything in there. I can even put a, pro, a polynomial of x in there and say it varies inversely as, you know, x squared minus x or whatever. Um, and so that's what inverse is. Now directly proportional is y equals k times x. Inversely means that independent variable, the x, gets shoved into the denominator. So whatever is done to x is now in the denominator, and that's what inverse proportional means. And so next, all we have to do is look at an example. So for a science example of inverse variation, we have the intensity of light. So the intensity of light reaching you from a bulb varies inversely with the square of your distance from the bulb in meters. So I can write a generic equation for this relationship. And if I say y equals the intensity and x equals the distance, 
then my equation is going to be y equals k over x squared. Now that k depends on, of course, um, the bulb and you know the atmosphere around you. So if I want a specific or particular equation for this, I need to actually have some information um, for a specific light bulb. Um, so let's say at three meters, the intensity is 120 units. What is it at six meters? And it's not half of it or anything like that. It's actually a little bit different because it's uh, x squared. So if I want to know uh, the answer to this question, I have to find out the k value for this particular bulb setup. And so I'm going to take my equation y equals k over x squared, plug in the information I have. Well, I have it's 120 units of intensity at 3 squared, which means k for this particular setup uh, is 1080. All right. And so if I want to figure out what it is at 6 meters, then I use my particular equation for this particular bulb, and I get y equals 1080 over x squared. And then I can plug in my 6. I get y equals 1080 over 36, which is 30 units. So now for something new when it comes to variation. You saw, you know, the baby version of direct and inverse variation in Algebra 1, but I never mentioned joint variation or things that were jointly proportional. And when you add the word joint or jointly into variation, what you're dealing with is more than the two variables. There's, you know, not just an independent and a dependent, but a third or fourth or fifth variable involved. So this, whenever you hear this phrase uh, or something like this, you are looking at a quantity that varies directly as the product of two or more other quantities. Um, and so let's look at a super generic example and then an incredibly famous one. So super generic, I tell you z varies jointly as x in the cube of y. And what that means is, is I have the z variable equaling some constant times x and then y cubed multiplied together. And so that's what joint variation means. It just means you have to multiply some stuff together. Now the super famous example I'm talking about is Newton's law of gravitation written in the language of variation. So if you look up Newton's law of gravitation now, you'll see a formula for it. But before he just had his formula, he also had to write this out in sentence format for people who didn't understand the notation that he was using in his equations. So the force of attraction F between two spherical bodies varies jointly as their masses m1 and m2 and inversely as the square of the distance r between them. So what this uses is direct, joint, and inverse variation to give you an equation. And here's what the equation looks like. So it's f equals some constant m1, m2 over r squared. So if you, oopsie, r squared, not r sub 2. So if you look up Newton's law of gravitation, you're going to see an equation that looks just like this. But instead of using K, you're going to see a capital G for uh, the gravitational constant.